This presentation, which is about ways of improving English speaking fluency via productive skills of speaking and writing, is actually complementary to our previous presentation, which we tapped on the role of input in developing oral fluency. In this study, we've therefore decided to focus on the role of output, especially writing and speaking, in developing oral fluency. Survival in the global village is not possible unless one has a good command of English and an acceptable level of oral proficiency, an important feature of which is oral fluency. Fluency is speaking smoothly and without unnecessary pausing. It also refers to quick and confident use of L2. Underpinning this study is Swain's theory of output. Output simply means writing and speaking, or in other words, what learners actually produce, whether it is written or oral. Swain came up with output theory because contrary to Krashen's input theory, he believed that input alone does not lead to language acquisition. Actually, in order for learners to learn and acquire an L2, they must be pushed to produce language. And not only this, pushed output also helps learners notice gaps in their production so that they will be able to take proper measures. More importantly, scholars of the field firmly believe that output directly enhances oral fluency by turning declarative knowledge into procedural one. So considering the important role of output in developing oral fluency and guided by Swain's output theory, this study was motivated to respond to one research question. What practical tips are suggested on two productive skills of speaking and writing by the most fluent Iranian EFL speakers to achieve fluency in speaking English? Many studies have been able to, confine, to confirm Swain's output theory in L2 acquisition, especially in the case of present study, the development and enhancement of oral proficiency. Some of these studies have been brought up here as examples, and I'm going over a few right now. So in one study, Yoshimura and McVinney said to determine the role of oral repetition in L2 fluency. To do so, they recruited 30 Japanese English learners and asked them to perform three tasks of listening, reading aloud, and sentence retrieval productions. And then eventually, authors were able to indicate that oral practice, especially pushed output, improved oral fluency. In a different study, Baradaran and Khalili were interested to know the role of online chatting in development of oral fluency. To do so, they gathered 52 participants, randomly assigned them into an, into an experimental group and a control group. Both groups went through 20 sessions of one-hour English classes. The only, difference, the only difference between control group and experimental group was the 30-minute extra hours of practicing uh, practicing or practicing speaking. So participants in control group, press, after their 60 minute classes, practice speaking for 30 minutes in the classrooms, while participants in the experimental group were, ask, were asked to practice speaking in online platforms while they were at home. And then by analyzing the data, the authors were able to indicate that participants in experimental group, in terms of their oral fluency, significantly outperformed their peers in, in the control group. This was a qualitative study, and to conduct this piece of research using purposeful sampling, we were able to recruit 17 very fluent Iranian EFL speakers whose age ranged between 19 and 55. The criteria and deciding factors for selecting these participants were their advanced level of oral fluency and not having lived in an English-speaking country. Participant level of oral fluency was determined using common European framework of reference for languages, especially by the aid of a speaking scale rubric. Prior to the main study, a pilot study was conducted with only three participants. To gather data, we used in-depth interviews. All interviews were carried out in Persian, which was participants' mother tongue. With participants' consent, interviews were recorded, translated, bank translated, transcribed, 
and then later on qualitatively analyzed. Once data saturation was reached, we moved on with qualitative analysis of the gathered data, as a result of which major themes were emerged. These themes are described and explained in the following slides. So based on data, we understood that participants enhanced their oral fluency by the aid of speaking and writing. As shown in the figure, there were different ways for participants to improve their oral fluency via speaking. Majority did so by imitating and repeating words, phrases, and sentences they heard in movies, series, talk shows, etc. Imitation and repetition also helped them attain native-like proficiency. Some did so by talking, either to themselves or to others, loud or quiet. These speeches revolved around certain topics or just simply daily events. Other forms of talking and practicing, pr practicing proposed, proposed by learners were, for example, talking to oneself, ver verbalizing, talking in front of a mirror, recording one one's voices, talking to others, communicating with tourists, talking in classes, retelling, talking via Skype, or even role-playing. Finally, some claim that singing along songs also helped them in improving their oral fluency. And in terms of writing, four out of 17 participants claim that writing helped them enhance their oral fluency. They used writing in forms of, for example, chatting with friends on, for example, Yahoo Messenger, playing online games, keeping a diary, or even using Twitter. Some direct quotations drawn from participants' interview data from which themes were emerged are provided here as well, and I will randomly go through a few. I usually practice speaking in front of a mirror. It enables me to match my facial expressions and gestures to those of native speakers I've seen on TV. I record my voice and listen to it to discover my errors and correct them. I used to play RPG 8 hours a day for about 10 years. Although it was, it was in written form, it was similar to real communication, so I had to read the dialogues in the speech boxes and answer them as fast as possible. I learned and practiced a lot of words, idioms, slangs, and even grammatical structures, which really helped me improve my fluency in a spoken English. By conducting this study, we've reached a number of conclusions. First and foremost, contrary to questions input theory, fluency does not happen by input alone. Output is necessary for this skill to be developed. Also, producing output helps learners notice the gap in their knowledge and fluency skill, and they will be able to take proper measures to remedy the, the situation. If learners want to develop their oral fluency, they need to talk to themselves and to others constantly and consistently, because consistency is the name of the game. Talking in front of the mirror is helpful in attaining nat native-like proficiency, and it even helps learners to acquire the proper facial gestures while speaking. Verbalizing and retelling also play a significant role in enhancing oral fluency. Voice recording while practicing oral by practicing and speaking motivates learners, helps them notice their problems and mistakes, and also helps them to adjust their speech rate to that of native speakers. And more importantly, the fact that writing too had an influence in enhancing oral, oral proficien proficiency of participants, it also indicates and confirms the wholeness and integrative nature of language. And last but not least, Acquiring fluency requires high level of devotion, determination, a lot of tears, and sweat. By conducting this study, we've been able to shed light on those most useful sources in enhancing oral fluency with an eye on the undeniable role of pushed output. Therefore, findings of this study would immensely help those English learners who want to take their oral fluency to the next level. This is the end of this presentation. We highly appreciate you for listening to us and following our study. Please let us know about your question and comments via the email address that is right in front of you. Once again, thank you all so very much.